Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We have a selection of different items in this mailbag video and before we get started I'd like to mention that during the past 3 or 4 weeks packages have almost stopped arriving here in Romania. I've been getting maybe 1 or 2 delivered per week and even packages which were shipped from Germany have been sitting for weeks before moving between warehouses. So I was wondering how things are going where you guys are living. Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully things will get better as many countries are trying to restart the economy in May. The first item is one you've seen before on this channel. It's a 7 inch Magic Arm clone from China. The original Magic Arm from uh, Manfrotto is about 100 euros and there is no doubt it's better built but uh, I need a few of these to hold various stuff around the workbench. LED lights uh, to hold the phone in front of various instrument panels while I'm shooting those and it would add up quickly if I were to get the original uh, Manfrotto mount. And you know what, this is not the 7 inch uh, version, I now remember that I ordered a smaller version so I believe this is like a uh, 4 or 5 inch version because I needed a smaller one of these to hold a monitor on my microscope. These replicas from China are good enough for what I'm doing, they're inexpensive and if you're curious about how these work on the inside, Big Clive did a video recently, he showed how one of these works. So check out his video if you're curious about that. The nice thing is that you have a single knob that you need to turn to lock or release the whole system. And you can find these in various sizes, as I mentioned I mostly use the 7 inch one but this is a smaller option. Also in a variety of sizes you can order professionally made printed circuit boards from jlcpcb.com. You can pick any solder mask color with no extra cost and you can also have those PCBs assembled by JLCPCB through their SMT assembly service. Right now they are offering every user a $7 coupon for the assembly service so it's definitely worth checking them out. Also as a mounting accessory I got this clamp which originally I believe is designed to hold an umbrella attached to your tripod but you can obviously repurpose this for securing any Anything that uh, fits between these uh, clamps. It has a smaller opening on one end and uh, a bigger one on the other side so I think this should come pretty handy for attaching a light to a stand which I keep nearby when recording videos. A magic arm would also do the trick but this is cheaper and for something that doesn't need uh, adjustment once it's secured in place this clamp would seem like a better choice. As always you'll find a link for this uh, item in the description below the video. Next up I have a selection of SMD fuses in this uh, 1808 SMD package. These are fast blow ceramically encapsulated surface mount fuses and I remember seeing these in uh, older equipment like old laptop mother motherboards but recently I think these are seeing a comeback in the DIY community and the test equipment coming from China for example the Raiden Bench Power Supply uses these uh, fuses. I got myself a few different values in here from 1 amp up to 8 amps and there are 10 pieces each. Since these are fusible resistors you might want to use a socket which would allow replacement of the fuse in case of failure but you can also solder these directly to the PCB. Now soldering it to the PCB would make replacing the fuse uh, a bit more complicated if the uh, end user doesn't have the right equipment. I believe the Raiden power supply had the socket for these uh, small fuses. Uh, in any case you can find uh, sockets for these on AliExpress, they're really easy to find and uh, you can order those as well. The fuses themselves are not easy to find with local distributors so it might be worth keeping a selection of these in your lab like I have decided to do here. Next up I have a couple of different 2.5mm uh, jack to RCA video connection cables. These are mainly used in uh, monitors with composite video input. For example in a previous mailbag I showed the rear view mirror with integrated TFT screen that would accept a 2.5mm jack for the video input. The problem is often manufacturers will have their own pinout where they expect the video signal on uh, some pin and a 12 volt trigger on another pin. 
to activate that video input to the monitor. So you'll find a uh, variety of these uh, cables with different pinouts and it's really worth confirming this with your monitor supplier to make sure you are getting the right cable to connect the uh, video signal to your monitor. In the case of the monitor I had, none of these cables would have done the job. I couldn't get the monitor to switch to the external input, so I suspect I was either using the wrong pinout or the feature was somehow locked in the firmware or, or of my particular monitor unit. Gallium nitride USB chargers are pretty popular these days and if you look on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, you'll find a bunch of similar projects and I suspect many of those projects are just rebadging existing chargers from a couple of manufacturers in China. Maybe they changed the style of the enclosure, the form factor, the LED color and they present it as a new revolutionary product with a new campaign but inside you'll probably find many of these are running the same circuit. Now the main advantage of gallium nitride semiconductors is their efficiency. Due to better efficiency they waste less energy through losses when compared to silicon and you can build smaller more densely packed power supplies that will dissipate less heat. So you'll usually find these uh, pretty compact around 60 watts rated USB Type-C chargers which work great for charging our modern devices. This one is from uh, Base US, which is I'm a fan of this uh, company and uh, I like the fact that this was available for order immediately. It was a real product with real feedback from customers and I didn't need to wait for some Kickstarter campaign to deliver it. One thing to mention here is that the cost of these has gone up considerably. It's uh, $10 more expensive now when compared to the time I ordered it. I have seen similar price increases for other items as well so I suppose it's, it must be due to supply issues and postage being more expensive during these times. If we compare this to the standard charger that comes with my laptop, uh, they have the uh, same maximum output of 20 volts, 3.25 watts uh, but we can clearly see that this one is a fairly bit smaller. I would even go as far as to say it's half the size. It's about the same height. It's, it just takes up uh, half the volume. So instead of carrying this thing around in my laptop bag, I can carry the smaller one and I also get some extra ports for charging a phone or a tablet or a second laptop at the same time, which is pretty useful if you ask me. Now the US uh, plug style would be even more compact than this by having just the two slim prongs coming out but this is what we need for uh, European sockets. A few days later after ordering this one I also ordered a second unit because I thought it might be inter interesting to do a teardown to see how one of these is constructed but unfortunately the second one never arrived so it's either lost or stuck in some warehouse but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a uh, down of one of these and if you are interested in uh, getting one check the links in the description. And also from Base US is this USB to lightning cable. Uh, it's the uh, braided type of wire. It's about 50 centimeters long with 90 degrees connectors on both ends. And this is exactly what I need to use in my car to connect the uh, phone to the head unit for Apple CarPlay. Now the USB on the head unit is horizontal so this 90 degree plug won't stick out too much and I believe this is also reversible so it could go either way to the left or to the right of the USB uh, host on the head unit. And this prevents accidentally knocking the connection and the lightning plug is also 90 degrees because of the way I place my phone in the cup holder on the center console. This allows it to fit nicely in there. And the 50 centimeters length is optimal to give just enough length for it to reach but not too much to become a wire clutter problem. Next up I have another USB cable. It is a cheap no-name cable, it didn't come with any special packaging but it's weirdly interesting because of the way this is constructed. They call this a uh, repair charging line and it's available with either a lightning type C or micro USB termination and what they mean by repairable is that you can cut a piece of this wire and reattach this connector. So I guess instead of building better quality cables that don't break they decided to build a cable that you can repair yourself because it's gonna break anyway. 
So these uh, charging cables usually fail in the proximity of the connector because most people pull the cable when unplugging from the wire itself. To test that this uh, cable is uh, really working, I have it plugged into a power bank. So we can see it's powering the USB meter and it can also detect the data lines uh, voltage levels. So I'm going to assume this uh, cable has a problem on this uh, line which I draw with a marker. I'm going to cut at that line and then I'm going to try to re-crimp that with the connector to see if it uh, repaired the cable. Now this is really interesting. There are no data lines inside this cable so it only, it's only used for charging. I'm not sure why, why I was seeing those voltages on the data lines. Maybe it has uh, something inside the uh, connector itself, some resistors to generate the voltages on the data lines, but itself it does not contain any data lines. It's just uh, positive and negative. Now you'll need to be really caref careful to insert this uh, cable into the same orientation. Uh, to make sure you're not reversing the uh, polarity but these uh, grooves on the bottom of the wire are also represented in the connector itself so it's pretty easy to get it in the right position. What you want to make sure though is that uh, this end of the wire is uh, cut pretty straight. Insert it all the way in, press the small clip and this should have the wire repaired. Let's check. And it behaves exactly the same as uh, before. I must admit this is a pretty interesting idea but I would rather have better quality cables that don't break in the first place and also contain the data lines. Now one advantage of this method is that you can use it to create like a custom length cable if you need it to be shorter but you'd have to be extra careful to connect it in the same orientation because otherwise it could mean a nasty short circuit which might damage your charger or the uh, device. Next I have a set of these plastic clips for securing wires to a surface and these can be great for wire management inside an enclosure or generally around the home for some DIY projects. These could probably fit up to 7 or 8 millimeters uh, uh, diameter wires and they are somewhat bigger than previous ones I had so hopefully they will stick better having this uh, wider surface on the bottom. A 3M uh, marked sheet with pre-cut double sided adhesive uh, strips is supplied in the package and you can get these as uh, transparent or black. While unboxing the next product you must be wondering what am I doing with these uh, nail covers or what, whatever they're supposed to be called. Well this is probably something few of my uh, uh, viewers have seen before but these are called smart nails and inside the package apart from these uh, different size nail covers you also get an RFID chip. This small guy right here is the RFID chip that is supposed to be uh, glued to your uh, fingernail and then covered with one of these uh, nail covers and probably painted over to hide the chip. This is supposed to be a 13.56 MHz NFC chip from NXP that is writable so with the right instrument you could read the data from a particular card you are using and transfer it to this chip so that later you can open an access door with just your finger. Wouldn't that be interesting for your friends or colleagues to see that you open doors by flipping a finger? Well, I guess it depends. There will also be questions asked about your new fingernails. So in the end, you might be better off embedding this chip into something else. Nonetheless, this is still interesting and I did try to scan this with a phone NFC reader app. It comes up as empty with no field set, unknown manufacturer. So presumably this can clone an existing 13.56 MHz chip as long as there are no advanced security features enabled on the original chip. And uh, as long as you have the proper instruments for reading and writing uh, NFC tags. If you're interested in uh, buying something like this, you'll find the link in the description below. And the last item in today's video are these uh, cleaning brushes. I have a set that will go with my rotary tool and these are the softer brass style uh, ones in a few variations regarding their size. And these are three types of uh, cleaning brushes with uh, steel, plastic and brass once again. 
Regarding the ones that attach to the rotary tool, please remember to always wear protective gear. The hairs on these will detach and start to fly at high speeds while you are using them. These ones with a plastic handle are not too great either. The density on these is uh, pretty low. So this will probably be something like a one or two time use. On the other hand, you are interested in some PCB cleaning brushes. Now you should look up the ESD safe ones, which are designed specifically for that task. Don't just go and use one of these nylon brushes. That was all for today. As usual, you'll find links for all of these items in the description of the video. I'm interested in hearing if you found something interesting, if you ordered any of these items, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more mailbag videos, I will link a playlist on screen. At the time of publishing this video, it contains 82 mailbag videos, so all you have to do is click somewhere in this area on the screen and keep watching. Thank you for watching this video, I appreciate your support and I'll see you next time with a new video.